Welcome, fitness friends. We are geared up for a mat workout. I have my lovely Sarah here to work out with us. And we're gonna start off with a tennis ball. And the other thing that we're gonna to use today is a pillow. So, um, you know, not a huge pillow. I'm gonna use this pillow. It could just be a throw pillow. What are you, whatever you have handy, maybe something without buttons or um, uncomfortable things. We're gonna end up placing it right here in our low back later on. So, we're gonna be on the floor on a mat or an area rug, whatever could give you just a tiny bit of cushion. Let's take the ball to the floor. And the ball shouldn't be on a hard surface floor because it will escape from you very quickly. But on an area rug, it should be just fine. We're gonna place our foot on top of the tennis ball. You could have a different kind of ball, a little bigger or even a little smaller and probably accomplish about the same thing, maybe even like a pet toy. So we're just gonna roll the ball under our foot. And so a little pressure, but not too much pressure. You want to feel that, um, that your nerve endings are just kind of being activated, but you wouldn't necessarily want any pain. So don't press too hard. Play with the amount of pressure. And as you're rolling your foot, I'm gonna put the ball under my heel and then I'm going to pull my foot back. And as the ball comes forward under my toes, I'm gonna wrap my toes around the ball. And then rolling forward and back. And as the ball gets close to your toes, your toes wrap around as if they were trying to grab the ball. And then release and rolling forward and back. So, um, you know, you're gonna wanna cover the inside arch a little bit, as well as the outside edge of your foot. So playing with that, but also just making sure your toes get the opportunity to curl back and stretch in that way that they don't typically get to stretch. So you just, you'll just notice that like you're, you actually are aware of your joints and your muscles and activating some of that as we're rolling through this. Good, let's switch the ball to the other foot. And we start off very gentle and adjust the tension as you're rolling through. Thank y'all for joining us today for this workout, for this mat workout. I am a Pilates instructor and I've been an instructor for about eight years now with lots of training and um, opportunities to work with individuals. So it's been my joy and my passion. I've really enjoyed it a lot. Um, and so it is a pleasure to get to work with you, work with um, our little fitness team here. So um, enjoy that foot roll out. Make sure you're wrapping your toes around on this other side, on this other foot. Inner arch, outer arch gets a little roll through. Good, it's a little balance challenge too, isn't it? Good, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the tennis ball aside. Have the pillow handy so that we can grab it when we need it. We're gonna start off seated, and we're gonna have our legs stretched out in front of us. Um, so with our legs lengthened out, we're gonna do a little bit more footwork. I'll just show you an option with the pillow. If it's hard for you to sit up very straight, with straight legs in this situation, we can always add the pillow and the pillow lifts up our seat a little higher and it makes getting those legs out straight much, much easier. So here we are, we've got a tall spine, so you're definitely gonna feel some tension in your abdominals to hold yourself up here. We're gonna do just a little bit of footwork. So our feet are parallel, toes, reaching up to the ceiling so they're in a dorsiflex. We're gonna to start to reach and point those toes away, stretching the top of your foot. And this may almost feel like you're gonna cramp, um, and that is normal. Then we're gonna flex, and as you flex, your heels might wanna raise up just a little bit. Try to lower the heels down with the flexed foot. 
And then we're going to switch back and forth. We're going to point and we're going to flex. And we're going to point. And I'm noticing my calves activate when I point. And then when I flex, what muscle? It's the quads that are really activating. So we've got lots of leg muscle work just seated tall here, moving our feet. So our feet really do connect up through the rest of our body, for sure. So if we have issues with our feet, a lot of times that's gonna surface and manifest somewhere higher up in the body. Good, so what we're gonna do is point those toes away. We're gonna turn the knees out a little bit, flex the feet, bring them in, and we point, rotate out, flex the feet, pull in, point, rotate out, flex, pull in, two more, point, rotate out, flex, pull in, and all of us are gonna have a different range of motion with this kind of thing. Good, and now one foot presses and the other flexes. So flexion and extension. Try to sit nice and tall again. I think I got a little saggy there. Good. Eight, seven, six, five. Are your shins starting to feel a little tired? Mine are. Four, three, two, one, and release. Woo. Okay. So our first full body exercise, now that our feet are super active and warm, um, is going to be a roll down. So Sarah, why don't you bend your knees and when we grab, bring our hands behind our thighs and lengthen our spine up, the resistance here kind of helps us get the lift through our spine. We're going to take our arms and reach them out in front. We get a fresh breath. And then we exhale to start to hollow the belly, lay the spine down. So once we slowly release to the mat, we're going to take those fingertips up to the ceiling, maybe overhead a little bit. We get a fresh breath and then fingertips back up to ceiling. We start to curl and lift ourselves up to seated tall. Good. And so now we're going to do a tiny twist off towards the camera. Fresh breath on this angle. And we're just going to lay the spine down with a little bit of a twist of the spine and torso. Good. Lower. Those arms come up overhead. Bring them center. Get a fresh breath and we're going to curl up the center. Good. We're going to twist off away from the camera. Are you going to come towards me? That's okay. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Fresh breath. Exhale to roll. Control that release down. Good. A little bit of a twist. Slide back into center. Fresh breath. Exhale for the curl. Awesome. Let's stretch those legs out to straight. We're going to go through the very same series here. Straight rolling down. Exhale to hollow your tummy. Lengthen your spine as you lay it down. Arms up overhead, fresh breath, fingertips to ceiling, and we curl. Squeeze those inner thighs together to help lift you up. Stretch over the legs this time. Good, and we lift. Twist off towards the camera, fresh breath. Exhale to lower. Sweep those arms to center, fresh breath. Exhale to curl up. If you need those bent legs, you can always bring assistance with those arms to come on up. Good. Let's twist off to the other side and we exhale and roll back. Yes, arms come center. Fresh breath and exhale to curl up. All the way. Good. Let's reach over those legs. Good. Stack to tall. We're going to bend our knees in. And then we're going to bring our arms to genie arms. So this is called C-curve abdominals. We start off with a straight spine. And now we're just going to roll back to what we call a C-curve. The belly is hollowed out and our spine is curved in the shape of a C to some degree. Good. From here, we are going to do a little twist to the camera. Twist. We roll up a couple inches. We come back to center and we roll back two inches. Good, so it's a twist and a lift and center.
center and roll back. A little twist, lift, rotate center. Feel that oblique work in your abs, guys. Twist, lift, center, release. Last one. Yes, hollow out the tummy. Good, and we're gonna twist the other way. Let's twist and lift. Come to center, roll back. I'm squeezing my inner thighs together to just give me a little bit more stability in my torso. Good, nice work, Sarah. Twist, lift, center, roll back. It's our last one. Center, roll back. Good, let's hold here. Can we raise the leg and lower a leg? Raise the leg and lower leg. We're bringing that leg up to our arms and dropping. And we've just got four more. Try to sink the tummy down with an exhale. Last two. Last one. Oh my gosh, lots of work. Bring it up. And a little break. Okay, good. So our next thing we're gonna do is we're laying ourselves down, be on our back. We're gonna do some bridging. So we can be on an angle for this. Sarah, why don't you, um, yeah, that'd be fine, sure. Yeah, and your head a little bit further over towards the, the edge of the, of the rug. Good, so we are ready for some bridging. We've got our shoulders heavy, and the back of my neck is long on the mat. From here, we're gonna get a fresh inhale, and then we exhale to tail tuck, and start to lift our tailbone, and then our spine lifts up from there. Good, we get those hips open up on the top. I'm pressing my shoulders down and my triceps are pressing into the floor as well. So I've got a supported bridge. I'm gonna take my right leg up to straight. I'm gonna flex the foot and I'm gonna press the heel up, up. And if this feels like too much for now, I would say just do a hip pulse. Lift, lift. Last four, and three, and two, and let's hold this leg up. We're gonna move it away from our center line about six inches and pull it back in. So that leg pulling off to the side activates some obliques. It causes our core to need to turn on to stabilize, to keep us from falling off to the side. We've got our last three here. Open and close two, and last one, hold it up, press strong through your arms, open your hip joint on your supporting leg, hip nice and high, good, bend that leg, bring it down, let's roll the spine all the way back to the mat, release, 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 ah, bring that little sigh of relief, we get a fresh breath, and we exhale to tip the pubic bone up and tuck, pull our belly button down as we peel the spine up to a bridge. Good. So we're holding bridge. And again, those arms and shoulders are helping to support us. Let's take that left leg up and we're gonna heel press up to the ceiling. Press up and lift and lift. Good, last four and three and two. Now try to hold those hips high. We open out to the side just a few inches and then pull back to center. Inhale, exhale. Keep that breath moving, guys. Most of the work is on that supporting leg. Aren't you feeling it? I am. Last four, or last three, and two, and one. Hold, lift those hips, bend that leg to the floor. Fresh breath at the top of the bridge. Open up those hips and then slowly lay the spine down. Articulating the release one vertebra at a time. And rest. Excellent work. Okay, our next level. We're gonna go ahead and find our pillow. We're gonna lift our hips up and we're gonna place it right under our glutes and our low back. So, um, our hips are just raised up a smidge. From this lifted position, we're gonna raise those legs to tabletop. So the nice thing about having the cushion there is it gets those hips a little higher 
and it makes holding tabletop just a little easier. From here, guys, we are going to do some toe taps. Keep your knees bent 90. We're going to open at the hip joint to drop a foot and lift and lower toes and lift. We're trying to stabilize through our core. Your belly should feel very tight and engaged. Keep breathing. We're going to inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Fingertips to belly and just be aware of tightening the tummy as you exhale. And we've just got a couple more here. Good, last two. Are you feeling some ab work? The belly should be tight like it's bracing for a punch to the tummy. Good, let's bring those knees in towards our chest and take a mini break. And again, that pillow kind of helps um, raise our hips up and makes it easier for us to tuck knees in towards our chest. Good. So we're going to go ahead and bring those legs back up to tabletop. From our tabletop position, let's stretch our right leg up to the ceiling and we're going to do something called bicycle. So we pull that leg far away and then against the mat or the floor, we're going to pull it back in. Your other leg reaches to straight, pulls away, and you're resisting as you bring the leg back in. It may be sliding against your mat or your carpet. So imagine your mat or your carpet just being covered with gold coins and your toes are pulling them in. You're wanting to claim as many gold coins as you can here, guys. Are you feeling the back of the leg have to work to resist and pull the toes back towards your glutes. Good. So we do a nice reach up and pull, reach up and pull, creating a little extra resistance against your mat or the floor. Last four, and three, and two, and one, and hug those knees into your chest. Excellent work, guys. Excellent work. Okay, we are ready for the psoas stretch. So take your left leg out. Keep your right leg hugged in close to your chest. Now the pillow is still under us, offering us a little bit of lift in our lumbar spine area. So for the leg that's out, make sure it's connecting with the floor, and you've got a very open hip flexor here on that left side. Right leg tucked in nice and close to your chest. We're then going to take that right leg up to the ceiling, and I want you to push your heel up as you bring your tailbone down into the pillow. Good. So we can flex and point and flex and point. A couple more here, and we're going to roll out that ankle in little circles with your ankle. Good. Let's bring that leg in, and we're going to switch out. So now the right leg is super straight and heavy to the floor. Left leg is hugged in close to our chest. Good. Opening up that right hip. Excellent work. Good. Let's go ahead and straighten that leg up. And then we're going to push the heel to the ceiling. Heel presses up as your tail presses down into the pillow. Make sure that the other leg is staying nice and long with the hip very open. Good, it's a big stretch. Let's point and flex with our lifted foot. We've already got it nice and warmed up from the tennis ball workout. And then roll into some circles and reverse. Excellent work. Good, so we're gonna bring those legs back to tabletop and we're gonna have a little bit of assistance on our reverse um, curls, reverse abdominals. So we've got our hands resting down on the floor, and then it's gonna be a little bit easier to tuck the tail and lift the hips up just a tiny bit. We keep those inner thighs connected, knees pressing into one another. As we exhale, we sink the tummy to curl the hips up. 
The belly contracts as that low back kind of stretches into a little deeper flexion. Hollow the belly. Got a little hollowing of the belly. Yes, tail tuck and lift. A little tail tuck. It's our last four. And we lift three. And two. And one. Good holding here. Stretch those legs up. Super straight, super long. We're going to open um, one side a little bit open. Good. Try to keep the other leg pointing straight up to the ceiling. Everybody's got a different range of mobility here. My arms are also helping to stabilize. Pull the leg back in. We're going to open up to the other side and pull back in. Look at Sarah go. She has tons of flexibility here. Good. Bringing it back up. Try to keep one leg pointing straight up as the other leg opens and closes. Good, what are we working? I'm feeling some obliques. I'm feeling some outer glutes here as well. Good, so you should be almost in like a perfect right angle at the hips. And it's our last one each way. And leave those legs up. One more set of reverse curls. Reach those legs long. If this feels like too much, bend the knees and we're right back to the reverse curls that we did before. So this is going to feel a little more challenging. We're thinking about lifting those toes up towards the ceiling. Good. Let the head, neck, and shoulders be as heavy as possible. The pillow gives us just a tiny assist, which I really like. It makes this exercise more accessible and safer and more effective in accomplishing the reverse abdominal curl. It's our last two. And last one. Excellent work. Those legs come down. We're going to move into sideline work. So we're going to rock ourselves up and the pillow could, um, yes, just go off to the side. So side line is going to be kind of fun. I like this move. It's, um, there's a couple different levels. We'll start off with the easier one. And we will be um, lengthened out on our side with uh, the top hip. That leg is going to be bent behind. And then we're going to try to be fairly straight. And interestingly enough, we have lines on our area rug here. So that kind of helps me be aware of where I am. So I don't want to be curled up to the front. I want to be open on the front. My elbow is right under my shoulder and I'm going to take my free arm over my head, just right beside my ear. Good. What I'm going to do is bring my free long leg, the inner thighs up. I'm going to make a connection between the arm and the leg. Deep abdominals and just a little bit of inner thigh to get that leg lift. Exhale, connect. Exhale, connect. Good. I'm hollowing the belly and actually rolling back just a little bit on my hip. Good. Nice work. Sarah's bringing her leg really up high. So you can adjust it. If you'd like to bring the arm down a little bit more or you want more work, you can keep the arm up high and bring the leg up a little higher. Anyway, they're trying to meet at some point. They don't even have to meet. We're just working at from where we are. We're working to be our best. Working hard. Good. I'm going to try to push up out of my supporting arm. Last two. Last one. Good. We've got an advancement now. The advancement is to bring the arm down. And this is going to be a little bit strenuous on the shoulder and the wrist. So keep that in mind. Once that hand's back there, I'm going to raise my hip up. Keep this leg in place. Arm overhead. Fresh breath. We're going to bring that arm and leg together. Ha! That's a little bit of balance challenge. Exhale it up. Exhale it up. Try to keep your chest open to the ceiling. Good. Exhale it up. Whoa! <laughs> Last four. And three. Exhale two. And one. Nice work. Woo! That was 
challenging. Okay, we are gonna come to an L shape. So, Sarah, yeah, I think we'll, we'll just have to figure this out as we go here. <laughs> All right, so we'll be in our L shape, and that means straight torso and straight legs out front. Again, your legs may need to be on more of an angle if you're lacking flexibility. That is not a problem. So I'm gonna walk my feet forward a bit more and I'm gonna try to push my heels out as my tail pulls back behind. So long hamstrings here. We're gonna take that top leg and lift it up and lower it down. I wanna keep the knees pointing in the same direction as I lift and lower. So we're lifting up against gravity. Imagine gravity was twice as heavy. So it's just like extra effort to lift the leg. It's initiating from up here in the abdominals. So don't think, oh, I'm gonna lift my foot. I want you to think I'm gonna turn on my abdominals to create the lift of the leg. Good. And now we hold that leg up about one foot above the other and we do mini pulses. Keep the foot flexed. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Tap in front of your lower leg, lift and tap lower. And then we're gonna tap above and below. So in front of the toes and behind the heel. Little mini arcs over the lower foot. Whoa, who's feeling this? Sarah, where are you feeling it? Um, glutes. Yes, definitely in the glutes. Yes. Good, so we just lay that foot down on the floor, mini tap, lift, tap, lift. Good, good, good. Hold right here, we're gonna do a bend, press, bend, press, bend, press. Woo! Push through the heel, push. Four, three, two, one and bring those legs in. I do feel that. I do, I do. Okay, we're getting ready for a side plank. So let's take those knees back. And again, the lines on my carpet are so super duper handy. What I'm gonna do is make sure my knees and hips and shoulder are all in a nice straight line. So my knees are not way out in front. I've gotta bring them back prepping for a side plank. So my top arm could be a kickstand to just give me a little extra balance. I'm gonna get a fresh breath here and I'm gonna exhale that lower hip up. Good, so it's a lot of work to hold yourself up here. We can take that top arm and reach it. Good, so if we want a little bit of an advancement, that top leg goes to straight. From here, fresh breath, exhale to twist, tuck, the fingers under and reach them back up. And we tuck with an exhale and we reach. Good, so a little twist and raise it up. Good, last one. Let's hold here. So stabilize, lift that lower rib cage. Activate the lower side of your waist if you want more two straight legs. And we just hover here. Can we hold? Can we keep pressing that lower hip up? Four, three, two, one, and rest that hip down. Bend those knees in. Do a little stretch up and over. Good, elbows trying to be up towards the ceiling, opening up that lower side. Yes, ha. Okay, let's switch sides. So now we're back to, um, our side line, finding a nice straight line with the elbow under the shoulder. The lower leg goes to straight, the top leg is bent. Do you want to scoot further that way? Good. And that arm, the fingertips are out, pointing out in front. Good. So from our position here, we're going to raise the arm up overhead. We get a fresh breath and we exhale, fingertips and toes together and exhale. Yes, and lift and exhale. Good. Good, and Pilates breath. We inhale through the nose, exhale through a soft jaw. Remember, it's the inner thigh that is up. 
that's visible to the sky. Last two. Last one. Do we want to advance it? If we do, we're going to come to a straight arm and we're going to push off of the back leg to hover. Good. The arm and leg are going to come together and it is a balance challenge. Yes, it is. Whoa. Good. Try to keep that arm and leg straight. I know it's tough. Last three and two and one and we bring it on down. It's time to make our 90 degree hips. It's the L shape. Good, and once we're down here, I'm bending my arm to just make a little pillow rest for my head. Remember the tail pulls back and the heels reach forward. And from this position, that top leg is going to lift about 12 inches and lower. And we exhale for the lift and lower. Good. And the, the movement, we're trying to initiate the movement from our deep abdominals. We want to exhale to create the lift. Exhale for the lift. Four. Exhale, lift. Three. Two. Let's hold it up. Little pulses. Good. Kneecaps both pointing in the same direction. Four, three, two, one. We're going to come in front of the foot and rest down, and we lift and rest the foot down behind your lower foot. Little arc shape over. Keep pushing through that heel. That, le that leg should feel like it is completely fully extended. Reaching, reaching. The hamstring lengthened. Tap, tap, good. We've got four more. I'm feeling a little fatigued. Three, good, two, and one. And we hover it up and it's a bend press. It's the tiniest little soften the knee and then push and push. Push through that heel, guys. Press, press. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we rest it down, bend those knees in. Whoa, excellent work, guys. We're definitely getting into that outer loop. That was abductor movement, pressing up away from your center line. So really good to strengthen the outer um, leg because we do so much forward and back motion as we walk and move that we sort of neglect the side muscles a lot of times. And this just helps balance us out and make us more balanced muscularly. Good, so we're ready for our side plank. I'm gonna bring the elbow under my shoulder and I'm gonna bend those knees back. Good, so we're in a nice straight line. I'm lining up my knees, my hips, my shoulder right here. Good, and from here we're gonna raise those hips up. Good, holding here in this knee plank, a side knee plank, can be pretty challenging. Raise the arm up, fresh breath. We exhale to twist and we lift the arm back up. We exhale to twist and reach. Good, threading of the needle. Last two. Good, last one, bring it on up. I'm gonna take my top leg out. This doesn't add much work, but just a little bit. Good. Keep pressing long and strong, lifting from that lower side. If you want more work, both legs come to straight, and we're holding here, and we're lengthening. We're keeping the chest nice and open. We're keeping the hips nice and open and stacked. Good. Four, three, two, one, and a well-deserved break. Bring it all down. Good, we're gonna grab the outer ankle and stretch up and over. Ah, melt those shoulders down nice and low. Fantastic work. Good, bring it all down. We're at a four point kneeling now. So we're gonna turn ourselves around to, let's um, you can be in any position you want to, uh, but just four points facing any direction. Good, and from here we've got our wrists right under our shoulders, knees ideally right under our hips. And the next thing we will do is tuck the toes under 
and from here we hover the knees up. So although the, the, the knees are hovered, they are only about one inch off of the floor. Push the upper body away from the floor, activating your back and your chest. We don't want to be in a turtle pose. We want to be lifted in our chest and our head. Good. So ideally, we're just looking right down at the floor, hovering in neutral. We're going to take those knees off to one side and then the other side, and then we hold. And we're going to do a twist, twist, hold. Good. And a twist, twist, hold those knees. Twist, twist, hold. Two more guys. Twist, twist, hold. The knees don't get the rest. Good. Twist, twist, hold. Bring those knees down. And it's time for child's pose stretch. Good. Let's lift the upper body. And I just want to say thank you all for joining us. I hope you're encouraged and motivated to keep working out with us.